computers, reloaders, and conversationalists, welcome to Founder Labs. In this presentation, we explain how cantalors can be used to improve 38 special hollow base wad cutter performance. What we're going to discuss here is part of a larger project of lowering costs for entry into NRA precision pistol competitions. We're going to focus on the centerfire line. One option is to use the 32 Smith & Wesson Long Wad Cutter or the 32 ACP, which are small cartridges and limited platforms. You could also opt to use the same 45 ACP 1911 that you use for that course of fire. Use it also in the centerfire line. We wanted to look at whether 9mm or 38 Super can be improved. Along the way, when we started adding cantalors to the 9mm, we saw that we had velocity increases but we didn't see commensurate improved improvements in grouping. So we paused to take a look at the past, where the 38 special wad cutter was highly successful and the 48 grain hollow base wad cutter had cantalores. So we started to wonder, what's up with that? So we decided to get the Smith & Wesson Model 452 and uh, go down the rabbit hole. Join us on the journey. We're going to be using a lot of the tools and techniques that we previously developed, but won't have time to go into details here. But don't worry, you can go to the Pounder Labs website, and uh, that's a link over to our YouTube channel. And here's a listing of a half a dozen different videos that cover these various topics. And then you're always welcome to uh, go to the website and send us a question through contacts, and we'd be glad to get back to you. This diagram is from work done by HP White Labs back in the day concerning bullet seating and double charging. Anyone uh, contemplating loading this round should study this diagram carefully. There's a couple of different types of wad cutters for the 38 Special. This is a type 2 button nose. These are the lubrication cantalors here, and this is a crimp cantalore. So you either could load this and use a roll crimp here, or you can seat it flush as illustrated here. We're going to be using a Type 1 wad cutter, the hollow base wad cutter, uh, which is uh, 620 mils long, so it's going to be seated deeper like this. This particular bullet is flat. The hollow base has more air space in here, but the point still remains that uh, you need to be very careful when loading these rounds because you can see uh, it doesn't take very long between overcharging and seating too deep to exceed not only the uh, SAMI upper limit spec of around 17K, by the time you're up here, you're virtually assured of exploding this round and destroying the gun. This is our experimental design for cycle one. It's always important to study the reliable reloading references. We're going to use a full factorial design. Factor one is three different charge weights. This is a standard ladder technique that we use in reloading all the time. Factor two, we're going to call constriction, and we have three levels, taper crimp, roll crimp, and then roll crimp with cantalores. This uh, gives us nine treatment combinations. Level raised to the power of factor, three to two is nine, and here you see the layout here. We're going to use the five shot group size. Uh, in the laboratory, usually if you repeat something three times, uh, you get a very good uh, feel for the means and standard deviations. But shooting guns is a little different. And uh, about a five shot group is the minimum you really need to do to get uh, some reasonable statistical data and uh, confidence in the averages and uh, standard deviation. Uh, we're showing that these constriction levels are evenly spaced. It's really not that way, but uh, just for the illustration point, uh, we wanted to be able to have a diagram where you could see how this lays out. We're using the Hornaday Swaged 148 grain hollow base wad cutter. Type 1 means that this is designed to be mounted flush with the mouth of the case. This bullet is dimpled and has a dry lubricant on it, which is particularly suited for the work we want to do. We're going to put it through a, a, a sizer at 358 mils just to ensure uniformity 
and give us a nice smooth service because uh, we're going to put it through the ultimate cantalore tool uh, to roll in the cantalore. So we do all of the bullets, uh, even for the ones that we're not going to crimp. So we're making all those as common as possible. For propellant, we're going with the Hodgkin tight group. The reason for this is it was dissolved to be uh, position insensitive. So when uh, cowboy action shooters are using 45 Colts, there's very small amounts of powder in there. And this is designed to be uh, position insensitive. And we think this will benefit the work we're doing by uh, doing constriction. Uh, reloaders understand there's a lot of different tables for what constitutes slower and faster powders. Our take on this is that this is a slower of the fast type. And again, we feel this is uh, gonna be a very good fit for the work we wanna do. And it's also known for being uh, good for metering. For cycle one, we're using new Winchester cases. For cycle two, we're gonna use a Starline you can either get these in individual packages or we're getting them in the uh, midway uh, bulk packages. Primer, we're going with the Winchester Small Primer. Nothing uh, particularly magical there. This is just kind of our basic go-to primer. Here's a look at the loaded rounds. Here we have the taper crimp and the roll crimp. We didn't experience any feeding problems with the taper crimp, but we do notice the roll crimp although it doesn't add much constriction, does dress out the end of the uh, end of the bullet nicely. Here's what they look like in profile. Here's uh, the uh, roll crimp with adding the can lure. Here's what it looks like on the bullet, and this is what it looks like on the case. We went with a 20 mil constriction crimp on the bullet and a 30 mil constriction crimp on the case. Uh, our bullet is uh, 320 mils long. The Hornaday reference uh, has a cold of 180 mils, which we thought was fairly tall. So on our cycle one, we want to back that off to 160, uh, mindful of what we showed earlier about uh, watching for pressure. And if everything works good, we'd like to move it down another 10 mils to 150 for our final rounds. Uh, on the pounder press, we get a uh, seating force of around 130 pounds force. And unlike bottlenecked uh, rifle cartridges where we can use long for caliper or overseeding to help compute uh, hoop, hoop stresses, uh, the way we seat the pistol, we really don't have that option. And we're just gonna have to be content with the seating pressure. And for this round, it's around 1300 PSI. To load this round to the standard we needed for this test, we needed to develop some additional tooling and gauging. This is the combination case trim gauge and flash hole conditioner. The uh, plug gauges are to make sure we don't have any constriction on the inside of the case. We're going to use the Dillon 550, which is a progressive press, but we load these one at a time, so it's best to think of this as a multi-stage, single stage. So we size and prime on the first station, uh, put it on the balance and tear it off the weight, rotate into station two, throw the powder and do the flare, uh, go back and top off uh, the charge up here. This is our powder trickler. This is a uh, alignment unit from back in the day and runs off of AC power. So it has a nice 60 cycle hum. So we get a very nice delivery of everything from spherical to stick powders, and we can uh, charge down to a micrograin level. Um, when you put the stick powders in, you watch them move down the chute, kind of reminds us of uh, termites following along, thus the name for this thing is pounder mite. It's very important for us to have a minimum flare on the case. There are several things that contribute to how much flare. First of all, the sizing die which is done from the outside, but also wall thickness comes into place, the overall length of the case, and also the metallurgical history of the case. So to get the minimum flare, we designed something called the pounder nut. This is nothing more than the larger of the Dillon nuts with a 640 tapped on all the uh, faces. So when we go to adjust the flare, we just back off the lock nut, move off the cap screws for the funnel, and we can rotate here. And since these are 7 8 thread, 
we get about a 50% throw, which is about 35 mils of adjustment. If we need more than that, we just simply take out the, uh, the bolt here, move it to the next, uh, next point, and we can go ahead and get another set of adjustments. We seat with the uh, Dillon seating die, which has inserts. There's one for round nose, and this is their one for uh, flat nose. You can see there's a hole there which uh, indents the top of the bullet, which we don't care for. So we fabricated our own out of brass and use this to um, seat the uh, seat bullets. And then we do the minimum uh, crimp and uh, we are good to go. In our Understanding Cantalore videos, we introduced you to the Model 2 of the Ultimate Cantalore tool, shown here. We'd like to now tell you how we use it for this application. We add a Cantalore on the bullet and a matching Cantalore on the case. The engineering and fabrication in this tool is amazing and extremely easy to use. Here you see it with the optional uh, slitted rollers, which you need for a rimmed case. You simply set this Teflon stop on the nose and then load the bullet and set the base adjustment here and then bring down the uh, lever and with just one turn you add the cantalore. Now it's very easy to get the cantalores aligned. So when you go to do the case, you leave the nose adjustment alone and just simply back off the base adjustment being mindful that a rim fits inside one of these grooves and you basically slows the handle, apply the pressure, and you cut the second cantilever. To set the depth, we use shim gauges here on the stop. So once we bring it down, we uh, set the shim gauge for 20 mils and then uh, apply pressure and roll in the cantilever. And again, one turn's all you need. Uh, so we use the 20 mil for the bullet and 30 mils for the case, and now we're good to go. This is the Ransom Master Pistol Rest. This has been the gold standard for testing revolvers and pistols for literally decades. You've seen it on Mythbusters, uh, on YouTube videos, and uh, it's been used by gunsmiths, ammo makers, and all sorts of laboratories, big and small. This is the combination model. So the football knobs and the baseball knobs are used to adjust windage. Normally up here you have star knobs for adjusting the pressure on the platen that holds the pistol in place. Under the guidance of Ransom, we replace these with these nuts so then we can use a, uh, a, a torque wrench to precisely set that pressure. To give a sense of it, it's about what you use for seating uh, scope rings. The internal material here is this elastomer is a rubber type material for duplicating the uh, grip. And we all know how important grip is uh, in pistol shooting. And by using the torque method here, we can get very accurate and reproducible setting of this pressure here. So the ransom rest is a critical part of our research. And here is a short clip of uh, it in action. So once you're set up, it's very easy to do the testing. You just return it back to battery and you're good to go. Here's our range test setup, field notebook, ammo layout per design, spotting scope, tablet with Bluetooth so we can talk to the lab radar and weather station, ransom master pistol rest, the lab radar on a bench stand, weather meter on a little tripod. Here are the cycle one test targets for 2.7 grains of tight group. With the taper crimp, roll crimp, then roll crimp with cantalores. These are all shot at 25 yards. You can see immediately the improvement that we uh, have from doing the ones with the cantalores. Let's now plot the results of cycle one testing. Here, the charge weight, here, muzzle velocity for each of the constriction levels. On each of these, we have good linearity and we have first order regressions. 
We can see there's not much difference between roll crimp and taper crimp, but just like what we saw with 9 millimeter, we see increased velocity over all charge weights with cantilors. Over here, we're plotting charge weight against CEP, and we're very interested in how low and consistent it is with the cantilors. We're not much concerned about these being very large. We're much more excited about how flat this is and how low the number is. So at this point, we're figuring since the same amount of charge is present on each of these treatment combinations, there must be something going on dealing with the efficiency of combustion. So we're very interested in moving in to cycle two. Here is another interesting way of looking at this data with the bubble chart. Each of these is the constriction level against CEP. Each bubble is the average of all charge weights, and this is the standard deviation of the CEP for all charge weights. This, the taper, this, the roll crimp, and this, the roll crimp with cantilors. So you can see from the size and position of this, it's pretty profound exactly the changes that could be made with the addition of cantilors. Here is the cycle two experimental design. This is a fractional factorial design. Again, factor one are three charge weights. Factor two is again constriction, but we just have roll crimp and roll crimp for cantilors. We uh, drop the taper crimp. That doesn't seem to bring anything to the dance. This leaves us with six treatment combinations. Now we're very interested in group size measurements, so we're gonna go up to a 10-shot group size. This, uh, again, enhances the uh, replication. It gives us uh, better estimates and tighter confidence, so it's statistically better than our five-shot group. We have plenty of degrees of freedom for calculating our average standard deviation in CEP. So here's what the, uh, the stage two or the cycle two experimental design looks like. Here are the cycle two test targets for 3.1 grains of tight group. Roll crimp and roll crimp with cantilors, both again shot at 25 yards. You can see a pretty significant difference in the dispersion of just the roll crimp and then the improvement made it with uh, adding cantilors. A quick note is when you're setting up the ransom rest, one of the checks you want to do is to make sure you're not getting vertical stringing, which suggests you don't have a, a good grip. And uh, we don't have that here. And this is the same thing we saw in cycle one. So we're very confident that our setup for the ransom rest is, um, is quite good. Here are the results for cycle two testing two very important things are apparent. There isn't a difference in velocities between with and without cantilors, but yet we still get a much better hit on target. This is our proposal for what's going on. The extra cantilor constriction allows more efficient combustion. So there's gonna be a small increase of chamber pressure giving it more time for all of the propellant to cook before it pops. So although there isn't any more chemical energy to create a difference in velocities, we will see we get a more consistent pop. So the flight of the bullet across all of these charge weights are more consistent and we get more consistent hit on targets. Here's the table of results for the cycle two groups with cantilors. Extreme range is the traditional measure of group size. You can see roughly one inch groups. We're much more interested in the statistical data. And we have both the PCAPX and the PCAP10. We'll notice that PCAPX is roughly about one. So when we go back and look at the critical values of CEP, we see that uh, the, all of these, all these charge levels might not hold the X ring all the time but compared to the 10 ring, they'll fit in there all day long. So now we have our load. 3.1 grains, a tight group. Coal at 1.15 with a roll crimp. 20 mil bullet cantilor, 30 mil 
case cantilever, we expect a muzzle velocity of around 850 uh, feet per second, and then the 25 yard PCAP 10 is uh, 2.5. So, with all this, it begs the question Is the 38 Special shooting the 148 grain hollow base watt cutter a candidate today for the center fire line? Well, you make the call. Here's how we see the landscape. There's at least a dozen providers that uh, load this round, and we haven't evaluated any of these for performance, but we do notice that none of them are using cantilevers. So we suspect these are primarily designed as light loads in revolvers for uh, training and uh, practice applications. All of the traditional match grade uh, wad cutter ammunition was loaded with cantilevers are now either discontinued and uh, or very limited supply and uh, we're not really surprised by that and the reason is all the semi-auto pistols that shoot this round are out of production here's our model 52 38 master we used for this test colt uh, offered the uh, national match 38 mid-range Here's a very handsome uh, SIG uh, Hammerly P240 in uh, 38, uh, special with the wad cutter. And then uh, here's the uh, Clark Custom 38. Uh, Clark was actually a pioneer with the application of this round way back in the uh, early days of, of, of pistol shooting and uh, made some very, uh, very nice guns. We believe we've demonstrated that cantilevers make a big difference in loads for the 38 Special with the 148 grain hollow base wad cutter. By using our methodology, we noticed that the velocity gains gave us insight that uh, improvements could be made. And uh, we see that the cantilevers provide a, a better, more complete combustion. Uh, think of it like a pressure cooker. It sits in there a little longer and we get a more consistent uh, pop and this gives a, a tighter flight and tighter groups for a broad range of charge weights. We also provide another illustration of how uh, analytics can be applied to the shooting sports or experimental designs, uh, leverage uh, you know, shooter knowledge, and we can use simple statistical methods uh, and uh, to help find a faster time to solution. Uh, if you're keeping track, I uh, realize that uh, we did all this with about 150 rounds, and that includes two uh, complete passes through cycle one. Uh, we also, I think, pull back the curtain a little bit on what the masters, gunsmiths, and ammo uh, makers back in the day did with the uh, wad cutter and using the uh, using cantilevers. So hopefully, gave some insight there. We'd like to give a special thanks to uh, Mike Ransom at uh, Ransom International for his valuable guidance and then uh, Kevin Knight with Ultimate Candler Tool for supporting us with the uh, UCT Model 2. This completes our presentation. And as you're thinking about subscribing, please look over these important notes and disclaimers. They're here for your protection and ours. Thanks for watching. Be safe. Talk to you soon.